Did you know that you can perform inference on images using AIP logic? Hi, I'm Gina, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to use images as inputs into your AIP logic function. Before we get started, a quick word from our founder. Discover how Palantir customers unlock more value from Foundry and AIP thanks to our live instructor-led trainings. We are Ontologize, a group of former Palantir engineers who love teaching. We've trained thousands of Palantir users at leading organizations around the world. Unlock the full potential of your Palantir deployment by going to ontologize.com. Today, we're going to be performing our inference on pictures of grocery store shopping baskets. The end goal of this tutorial is going to be to create a module where we can upload an image of a grocery basket, submit it, and then run a multimodal model to determine what's in the grocery basket and feed it to the user as a response. So let's get to building. So I'm going to start by navigating to the project that I'm going to do this exercise in. So from here, I'm going to hit Control-J, and I'm going to search for my project. So Gina Learning Project, or whatever yours is called. And now from here, I'm going to make a new folder for this exercise. So I'm going to hit New, and then Folder. And I'm going to call this one Images in AIP Logic. I'm going to navigate to that folder. And now from here, I'm going to upload my data. So again, we're going to be working with images of grocery store baskets, but frankly, for this exercise, you can use whatever images you want to use. So from here, I'm going to hit New, and I'm going to hit Upload Files. Choose from my computer. And I'm going to select all of these photos that I've downloaded, and then hit Open. And now when I upload photos, it's going to give me the option to upload these as a media set. So you're going to want to choose that option. And then I'm going to hit Next. You can keep this to transaction lists, and you could add other media formats here, but we're just going to be sticking with JPEG for now. And then you're going to hit Upload. And now we're going to hit Done and give this a name. I'm going to rename this and call this Grocery Shopping Baskets. Now remember that you can only use AIP Logic with Ontology. And so in order to use these images in AIP Logic, we will have to make an Ontology object that has a media reference property containing these images. In order to do this, I'm going to need a data set, not a media set, that contains media references to these images. So from here, I'm going to hit New, and search for Pipeline Builder, and click Pipeline Builder. And I'm going to call this one Turn Images into Dataset. It's going to be a batch pipeline, and I'm going to hit Create Pipeline. So now from here, I'm going to hit Add Foundry Data, I'm going to grab Grocery Shopping Baskets, which is the media set that I just uploaded, and hit Add Data. So here I am in Pipeline Builder, and I have my media set. Now, from here, I'm going to hit Transform and say Convert Media Set to Table Rows, which is our only option here. And I'm going to hit Apply. Now, if I hit Preview, I can see the results of this operation. So you'll see here that I now have a sample of five images. And so I have the timestamp, I have the path. I have the media reference. So this media reference is a reference to the image that we have. So that enables us to use this piece of media throughout our pipelines without duplicating the piece of media. And so our work here is done. Our primary key is just going to be the media item RID, and then I'm going to hit close. So at this point, we have two options. One is we could do what I did in one of my prior videos, which is we perform an inference on images using Pipeline Builder. Now, that would be one option for a specific set of use cases. But if you want to build a function that you can surface in Workshop and have users interact with on the fly, you're going to have to do that in AIP Logic. So now that we have a resulting data set, from here, we're going to have to create a data set output so we can access this data in the rest of Foundry and create an ontology object from it. So from here, we're going to hit Add Output. Now note that you could create a new object type directly from Pipeline Builder. But in this case, we're going to create a data set and then navigate to Ontology Manager to create our object type. So we're going to hit New Data Set, and we're going to call this one Grocery Basket Images. And now I'm going to hit Save and Deploy, and then Deploy Pipeline. Now we're going to have to wait a moment to wait for this data set to finish deploying. But once we do, we're going to go configure our object type in the Ontology Manager. So now that our pipeline is finished deploying, we're ready to go create our object type. So from here, you're going to hit Control-J and search for Ontology Manager. Now you're going to open that up. 
So here we are at Ontology Manager. So from here, I'm going to hit New. It's going to be an object type. I'm going to be using an existing data source. And the data source is going to be the one that we just created. So I'm going to select data source and go to Recent Files, click on that folder, Images and AIP Logic, and grab Grocery Basket Images. And now I'm going to hit Select. And then I'm going to hit Next. Now for the icon, we actually do have a shopping cart icon, so that's really fitting. So I'm going to search for Shop, and then I grab my little grocery shopping cart. I'm going to make that green. All right, now you might need to prefix this with your name if you're on a stack where a lot of people are going to be doing the same exercise. So now we're going to hit Next. And so for the primary key, it's going to be the media item RID. And for the title, it's going to be the path, which you may recall is the file name. So I'm going to hit Next. Now we don't actually need to generate any action types, so we'll skip that part. And then we're going to hit Create. And now we're going to have to do a little bit of extra configuration to make sure this media property is set up right. So we're going to go to Properties and go to the Media Reference property. And here, you'll see that the base type is just a string. Now, that's not going to do anything special. In order to associate this property with the actual image that it points to, instead of a string, we're going to make this a media reference. Now, once we do that, we're going to be prompted to map it to an existing media set. So here, we're going to hit Add Media Set. And the media set is, of course, going to be in our recent files. And images in AIP Logic. And we're going to go grab our media set, then hit select. And then set as media reference property. Setting this property to be a media reference and mapping it to the underlying media set will allow us to interact with this property as an image throughout the ontology. So now we're going to hit save. And then hit save to ontology and save changes. And now here we will have kicked off the indexing process. So in our data sources, you can see that we are running the initial sync. Now note that if you're on a branch and you save, you're not actually going to kick off the index process. You have to merge your branch before that process actually kicks itself off. So we're going to give this a moment to finish indexing before we try to use it in AIP logic. And now once your live pipeline looks like this and you have all green check marks, it means that you are all indexed to the backend and you are ready to go. From here, I'm going to open up AIP logic. So I'm going to hit Control J and search for AIP logic. Open that up. And now from here, I'm going to hit New Logic. And I'm going to call this one Grocery Basket Object Identification. And I'm going to hit Save. So here we are in AIP Logic, which is Foundry's no code AIP enabled function builder. So when we hit Add Function Inputs, you'll see that out of the types, we have a lot of different types that we can add. But you'll see here that there is no media reference input type. And so instead, we're going to add an object input. So for the object, it's going to be grocery basket images. And that is our input here. So now we're going to keep this one simple. We're just going to have a one-step function. And it's just going to be the use LLM block. So we're going to call this block identify items in basket. And so for the system prompt, remember, that's like the job description. And then the task prompt, that is the data that we need to do the job. And so the system prompt is going to be, you are responsible for identifying items in an image of a grocery basket. And now for the input data, we have to give it the grocery basket. Now here is where we're going to reference that media reference property. So here, if we're going to say the grocery basket, and then type a forward slash, and now we're going to grab that media reference property on our object. And so here we're going to grab that media reference and hit add one property. And so now the output type is going to be a string. So now let's select one of these images and then preview the run to see how it does. So here we can see the result, the grocery basket that contains bananas, a loaf of bread, a bottle of wine, and so on. Now what's probably more interesting is if we can actually see what image it is so we can see for ourselves. And so here I can see the images and that looks about right. So we'll close this out. And so that is going to be the response from our function. So now we're keeping this pretty simple here, but the key here is to be using the media reference property from the input object. So now we're going to save this and publish it and talk about how you can actually surface this to your users. So from here, we're going to hit save and publish. 
Now, you're going to have to bind this to a specific ontology, so make sure you select a target ontology for this to land in. And now I'm going to hit Publish. And now we can go use our function in Workshop. Now, before we go ahead and use this function in Workshop, I'm actually going to add one action type. And that is going to be an action type that allows a user to upload a piece of media, like another grocery basket, so we can do this sort of classification on the fly with new pieces of media. So before I go to Workshop, I'm going to hit Control-J and actually go back to Ontology Manager. So now, before I go ahead and make this action, I'm going to have to enable edits on the object type. So I'm going to go to my grocery basket images, go to the data sources, and toggle on Allow Edits. And now I can go make an action. So I'm going to go to New, Action Type. And the object type that we're going to be operating on is our grocery basket images. So I'm going to click on this one. This is going to be a Create Object action. So I'm going to hit Next. Now, of course, we have to fill out the primary key. So I'm going to hit Add Property. And we're also going to be adding in, of course, a media reference. And now I'm going to hit Next. And then Next. Now I'm going to be allowing everybody in my organization to carry this out. So Use. And then Create. And so here we have our rules. So what are we actually doing when we create this object? And then we have the parameters. So how does this form actually look to users? So here's how this is going to look. Because this is a media reference property, Foundry knows that it's going to require some sort of JPEG upload. So that's all we're going to need to add there. And so now we're going to hit Save. And then Save to Ontology. And then Save Changes. So now that we've created our action, Let's go into Workshop and put this all together. So I'm going to hit Control-J and search for Workshop. And it's going to be a blank module. And we're going to call this Grocery Basket Item Identification. And then I'm going to hit Save. And now this is just going to be a sample app for how to put this all together. So I don't really need this second section. So I'm just going to hit the garbage sign there. So here, I'm going to start by adding an inline action form. So I'm going to hit Add Widget and search for inline. So we have inline action form. So I'm going to grab that one. And the action is going to be create grocery basket images. And so here, it's just a file upload. And so on the bottom, I'm going to add a new section below. And I'm going to add the AIP generated content widget. So one of the capabilities of this widget is for displaying the results of an AIP logic function. So I'm also going to give this one more room. So I'm going to hit display, make it a flex, and then bump up the flex a little bit. So now let's go continue to configure this widget. So the logic function is, of course, going to be our grocery basket object identification now then, what is going to be the function input? In order to determine what the function input should be, we have to think about how we want users to experience this workflow. So in this case, we're going to have users upload an image, and then they're going to see the results of what is in that basket here. So I'm going to hit Choose from your computer. So notice here that this inline action form produces an output object set. So this is the object set that is going to be created when a user triggers this action. And so I'm going to be feeding that object set into my logic function. So here I'm feeding that resulting object set into my logic function. So let's try it out. So I'm going to hit choose from your computer. And I'm just going to upload one of those images that I already uploaded. Grab any image. And now I'm going to hit submit. And now I can hit run LLM. So here we can see the result. The grocery basket contains lettuce, a red onion, so on and so forth. Now, of course, there's many ways that you might actually want to use this AIP logic function. For example, you might want to run this AIP logic function as part of an automation, or perhaps some sort of human-in-the-loop workflow to make sure that classifications coming from multimodal models are indeed correct. So in summary, we started with a media set, which we then transformed into a data set, saved as a data set to Foundry, then we created an object type from that data set. Next up, we created a quick AIP logic function, and then we surface that in Workshop along with an action. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this helpful.
Let us know what you want to see next in the comments. Thank <laughs> you.